If it's not a hurricane, Bruce, brief Mr. Diamond right now on what's ahead. Well, I think what we have here is a pretty powerful uh, tension between drags that are not going away and a very resilient uh, private sector with the health of both households and corporates being quite remarkable right now. Uh, I think what we're going to see is growth uh, continue to be on the softer side, but growth continue to show resilience. Uh, we don't see a near-term recession. Uh, we see a global economy which actually does okay in the second half of the year with right. the U.S. slowing and the rest of the world doing somewhat better. What does China do to the U.S.? You call it the audacity of hope. I agree. We have a jump condition in copper this morning. But link in all of your Asia research over to what's happening in the United States. Well, I think the, the U.S. manufacturing sector mostly is going to see some softening as a result of what's been happening in China. I think in addition to that, there is every reason to think that higher interest rates, higher energy prices is going to hurt things like the auto sector, we can see that. Uh, and we've just been through a really good run for U.S. and global manufacturing on the back of inventory dynamics. So I think industry is going to slow. You know, our basic point is there's no real reason to be worried about a recession. There is some slowing in the, in the picture. But the other thing is that part of the reason we're getting slowing is high inflation. And I think the combination of high inflation and tight labor markets is starting to change the inflation process, which over time is not good for the sustainability of this expansion. So I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay the underlying dynamics here, which are worrisome, but not about near-term recession risk. I think you'd have to get hit by much bigger shocks to really talk about recession anytime in the next 12 months or so. Bruce, to one of John's uh, pet peeves that he mentioned this morning, the good news is bad news that we experienced on Friday, that momentum in a labor market highlights how much the Fed has to do. Is that your takeaway from the recent data, that there is nothing to stop the Fed from being more aggressive than the market is currently pricing in? I think over time that's true. I think the Fed is committed to 250s. Uh, if we're right and the economy is slowing towards a 2% pace later this year, there's a good chance they slow the pace down. But, but ultimately, I don't think what you see in market pricing is going to be consistent with the get Fed getting control on inflation, uh, slowing the economy down to, to something that's going to be weak. And I think ultimately the Fed's going to have to do more. But I don't think the Fed is ready or signaling it's willing to do that much more, I think, in the near term. And I think that's important. The Fed does not want to create a recession right now. The Fed is tolerant of inflation above 2%. So this is going to take time before we get to the point where the Fed really has to hurt us. So, Bruce, when I was reading a lot of the notes over the weekend, there seems to be this distinction drawn between a slowdown and a recession. Is there really some sort of clear-cut distinction here? Or are we basically just parsing words around the same issue, which is how do you price in a loss of momentum? I think there's a huge difference between a slowdown and a recession. We haven't had a recession in the U.S. without the U.S. unemployment rate rising <clears throat> two percentage points or more. Recessions are nonlinear events where corporates are pulling back. So I think we should be careful when we use those terms to make sure we understand that that's what it means. There are a number of different ways yeah. the economy can slow. I think it is likely the U.S. economy is slow. I don't think it's likely right. that we're going to see that kind of break that we've seen that's been notable in recession dynamics. First, one of the big distinctions of J.P. Morgan is how you parse it out among your team. I know you hang on every word that Daniel Silver writes. And this weekend, he writes about high wage growth. This is a really important concept and that the new domestic labor economy is skewing again to high wage job growth. Discuss that. Well, as, as the uh, pandemic got hit and uh, we saw dislocations in the economy, an important part of the wage gains we were seeing and the elevated wage gains were not tied to the tightness of the labor market. They were tied to the dislocations, and they were unusually skewed towards lower uh, skill uh, uh, job sectors. And now we're seeing, I think, what's more consistent with the tight labor market, uh, wage pressures uh, building and wage pressures building in particular in sectors of the economy that are high wages. I think the problem the economy has, even as it slows, is that the labor market tightness, uh, the salience of inflation, uh, is starting to affect the wage and price setting process. And I think that's the issue around the sustainability of the expansion that ultimately is going to be a serious problem. How long can the consumer remain resilient if you don't get wage gains commensurate with inflation and if you see people eating down into their savings as we have? 
Well, first of all, we should realize we are getting wage gains commensurate with inflation. The, the wage bill, wages and, and hours together, have been growing at about a 9% pace over the last uh, six months or so. So we have been getting that. I think we are going to see slowing in, in wage income, partly right. because the economy is slowing. Uh, I do think the US, U.S. household sector has every ability to continue to absorb drags from higher inflation. The question is whether they're going to be willing to and whether corporates are going to continue to right. generate that kind of labor income. Come. Bruce, you're going to hate me. We talk to people in the White House and we say, when you go into the Oval Office and sit on that gold couch, how does a president take in your economic data? <laughs> when you wander into Mr. Diamond's office and you have to do a briefing, how does he take in the Casman economic data? Well, I think he takes it in and he's got his own views. I, I remember quite distinctly in the past that, uh, you know, the leadership of the firm was much more clear cut about understanding dynamics and financial conditions and how they were going to impact on the on the on the macro economy. That's something which as economists we may not fully appreciate. I think that's one of the issues we have to face right now is financial conditions are tightening as we're seeing it. And we we give our uh, advice, um, you know, as we see it, uh, we see the economy slowing. Uh, we right. don't see a, a financial storm uh, coming uh, right now. Uh, and we think the economy is going to avoid recession yeah. as we go through the rest of this year. 